Hi, I'm Filippo Voltaggio with Life Changes, and I'm here at the Reconnections U.S. Mastery Conference. And I have the pleasure of sitting with and getting to interview again Dr. William Tiller, who is Professor Emeritus at Stanford, and so, so, so much more. You know, I had the pleasure of interviewing you on radio just a week ago. Yes. And there was so much that came from that interview. Uh, the hour wasn't enough. And no, never is. <laughs> and uh, obviously, uh, you've dedicated a whole life to, to yeah. this information that you're bringing forth now. Uh, has, you have obviously known some of this information for a while. Have you been speaking it before and has it fallen on deaf ears or it, it wasn't even the time for you to bring it out? Why now? Ah, I have been speaking about this kind of stuff for 40 years. Really? Really. The general public love it. The orthodox scientific community hate it. Because mm. it challenges it, a it, belief it, system. It challenges a belief system. That's part of it. The other important part is the orthodox science, and of course I'm a card-carrying member uh, mm. for 50 years, basically, nine mm. in industry and 34 at Stanford. Um, Bell Labs, was it? No, it was Westinghouse Research Lab. Westinghouse, Labs. right. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't realize it until recently that the problem is that orthodox science for the last 400 years has used a reference frame to look at nature, and the reference frame is distance time. Okay, there are normal cognitive systems within humans. And science seeks internal self consistency, and it suffers angst when it sees or thinks it sees a body of data expressed by people that cannot be internally self-consistently fit mm. in with their, the data they've been gathering for 400 years. Mm. And the problem is, probably several problems, but one that's important is that in this area of human qualities, consciousness, intention, emotion, mind, spirit, love, physio psychophysiology, parapsychology, this class of phenomena in nature are not distance time dependent. Mm. And therefore, they can never be internally self-consistent with a reference frame that's distance time dependent. Just mm. as simple as that. And that's why it, one of the reasons, it really causes concern. And orthodox science community would prefer to sweep it under the rug. And they try to in every way they can. It would be much healthier for them if they would realize that the reference frame, distance time, is not the only one available in the universe. They should recall the circumstance back in the days of Galileo. I when was about to say, yeah, history is repeating itself. It is repeating itself. Basically, in Galileo's time, the, uh, the priests who were analogous to Orthodox scientists today, their reference frame was a theological one. That was their paradigm. Mm. And they felt they really understood how the universe was working with that paradigm. And so why the heck would they want to look through the telescope at some crazy guy's experimental data? They knew what the answer was. Mm. They just happened to be wrong <laughs> because they had developed hubris and no longer were open to learning about things about nature. They thought they knew it all, mm. uh, and they didn't. And we're in the same way today. We're in the same way today, and I wonder if 60 years from now, 100 years from now, if what we're learning today will be not wrong. It will be a, an expansion of the today's orthodox paradigm. So it will be a new paradigm, but it will be just an expansion of it. And maybe 200 years from today, if we're still around, um, it might sort of run out of gas and need another input mm. to see a larger aspect of nature than 
distance time in psychoenergetic science, and then the next step. But at this point, it looks as if all the higher dimensions um, function in the physical vacuum and are they're different kinds of stuff, but they're all sort of wave-like stuff. But very likely, there will be something dramatically different, and it will be time for a course correction. So you think of it as a trajectory of our evolution. Mm. There was the theocratic one, then there was a distance time one, now there'll be a psychoenergetic science one, and then something else beyond that. Mm. I mean, that's what we have to be awake and open to, not let ourselves fall into hubris. So in a sense, I, I don't hear you criticizing per se, except saying, y y let, us, let us not fall into that. Yeah. Let us be open. Right, exactly. The, the, uh, when I didn't understand, I held some angst. Mm -hmm. uh, but I understand, and once you understand something, you can't feel badly about people who, who do it. They're, they've had no experience to cause them to see, and they're stuck. Mm. Uh, as I said in my t talk today, they're sort of addicted. It's a kind of an addiction. It's a strong attachment mm. to their reference frame. For 400 years, there's been remarkable progress in that reference frame. And it still can be great progress along that path, but it can't really deal with all these wonderful things about humans. But surely you see how some of what you're sharing is cutting the legs off of tables. <laughs> it, doesn't, it, it doesn't cut the legs off the tables. What it does, it says those tables are just fine. They're just not big enough. Hmm. The orthodox science is not wrong relative to their reference frame. They've done remarkably good work. And these people are incredibly bright. And I want to welcome them aboard this next stage in the adventure, because they have a lot to contribute once they can get their head around giving this other stuff meaning and can accept the fact that, oh yeah, it's just an expansion. It's a new adventure. Let's go, guys. Mm. Uh, mm. That's, that's the way I see it now. And I, I think that's a, it is just part of our becoming as a species. Uh, and we have a marvelous future ahead. As far as I'm concerned at this point in time, we're still babes crawling across the floor of the universe. Mm. We're not anywhere near writing right. a theory of everything. And we're supposed to be growing, growing yes. into young adults and into yeah. adulthood, so yes. we're supposed to be changing. Exactly. And so nothing is supposed to stay the same. The unseen, the universe, is driving this process, and it's speeding this process up. So we've got to get on board, and we are. M and most of the general public is. And, and that's what I was just about to ask. So, so the public that is appreciating yes. this information, you're seeing more oh, yes. appreciating it now mm -hmm. than before. Much more appreciation. And what will happen probably, see the general public through their taxes pays for all the research in the country, mm. uh, in the world probably. And so they will get to the place, I suspect, because they no longer want to be, they see enough of this that they know they're not just meat, mm. which is what the present paradigm thinks are people. No, no human qualities of consciousness can ex be expected to do these things, mm. be expected to influence a well-designed target experiment. Y you know, just that, that's, just, that's just impossible. Well, that's wrong. We've shown that that's totally wrong. So, but they don't want to accept the data. They don't want to look at the data. If they don't have, they don't have to accept it if they don't have to, if they don't, are forced to look at it. So probably the general public at some point in time will rise up on their hind legs and they will force them to look at it. Mm. As we close here, if we're not just meat, what are we? Oh, we are wonderful. We are full of consciousness and potential. The, the latent energy potential stored in the vacuum relative to the electric atom molecule stuff, our normal reality stuff. Within, one sing within the vacuum of one single hydrogen atom, there is a trillion times the latent energy in our normal distance time cosmos. <laughs> really? In, in 
potential all, all energy. the planets, all the planets, all the stars, all the cosmic dust in a cosmic sphere with radius 15 billion light years. That little volume of vacuum, which is the em seemingly people think of it as empty stuff. In every cell of our body. Yes, and in every atom of every cell of our body. One, the volume of a single hydrogen atom is one over one followed by 24 zeros of a centimeter, cubic centimeter. And the potential energy in that? Within that is more than all the rest of this. Everything we look out on in our universe, our cosmos, everything. Um, it is amazing. So you can begin, I mean, nature doesn't make foolish mistakes. <laughs> so this says, hey, this is the fuel mm. of our future of what we will deal with as we work on becoming more and more within ourselves. We will be tapping the vacuum. I can't imagine being more than what you just described and, and obviously it's a different, uh, no. it's <coughs> a different, it's an expansion that we're talking about. Can't wait to talk a little bit more when we come back. I'm Filippo Voltaggio talking to Dr. William Tiller. <laughs>